Yo, yo, yo. Hello. How art thou? I, I think I think my mouth my mouth my mic cut out halfway through that, so oh. <laughs> don't I sound like a tit. Oh, I feel like we're forgetting something though. Is it your camera? Because that's turned off at the moment. No, it isn't. Um give me a second and I will sort out your camera. Uh but other than that you haven't done your intro, Connor. I have a double Welcome to the Gay, gay Gangnam Style with Penis podcast. <laughs> Was that a good one? I made that on the fly. Uh, let me just sort this out, and then we'll do it. 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 Do it. We'll do it. Well, I think Gay Gangnam Style with Penis is a is is an all right one. No, do it again, man. Do it again. Do it again. You're you're live on the air. I'm live on the air. Yeah. I wasn't before. You was before, but I was sorting out the thing, so therefore you wasn't live on the air for me. Oh, okay. Uh, welcome to the Gay Gangnam Style with Penis podcast. How art thou, Kuna? Um, I is good, in it. Uh, so let me find the playlist that I keep using every time I stream now. Yeet. I straight up just use a playlist of just um, songs. Uh, which, which songs? Uh, brand, just, is it, uh, is it gaming soundtrack playlist? I, sh I shit you, <laughs> why the fuck are you downloading? What is it downloading? This is the best podcast on the internet. Right, I got so fucking pissed off with getting copyright claims for literal Vaporwave. So I thought, right, okay, fuck you then. I'm going to just literally steal other people's gaming soundtracks because no one seemed to give a shit about that. Yeah. So, so, uh, so if it's Nintendo, I would assume. Can you hear my voice just fine, by the way? I can hear your vo voice peachy perfect. Perfect. I'm going to put it closer to my mouth, though, just in case. Hear my dulcet tones, you know. Oh, Chrome seems to be louder than it usually is. There we go. Okay, we good? We are Gucci gang. Sweet. Uh, yeah, how you been, my dude? I've been doing good. I think it's time to talk about our week after a long, lengthy and fucking terrible intro. Yeah, that was kind of the worst intro that we've ever had. Oh, I, well, I wouldn't say that. We've had much worse. <laughs> there was somewhere I was acting pretty dumb everywhere. Uh, I can remember those. I like those ones, though. I, I mean, like those ones. put it this way. We're not exactly the pinnacle of fucking quality, are we? No, but that's how we operate. That's how that's our comfort zone, you know? And uh, I'd say that it's a good thing, you know? It's uh, it what, <laughs> it what separates the wheat from the chaff, you know? It's what, what makes us special. We shouldn't be allowed on the, the fucking internet, shit. man. shit. We, we shouldn't be allowed on the fucking internet, man. My week was uh, pretty <laughs> good. My week, uh... Oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. It's all falling apart, this podcast, isn't it? The quality of the podcast reigns supreme, I see. It's all falling apart on this podcast right now. Can we get every anything right? Yeah. We should have, like, a checklist. Can we, can we have a That's like in the, the chat, please? We have an RIP. Can someone just hit F for me, please? We have an F um, in the chat, please. My week, I did a few things. I did a few things, yeah. uh, video game related. However, because it is a video game podcast, I shall start off with the fact that I have been playing a little bit of yeah. uh, Skyrim. Uh, I broke the game. I broke the HUD. I got really mad. I deleted the whole game. I'm now going to start all over again from the modding story. Uh, yeah, there are some really good mods on there. I'm you trying to turn it up into Dark already. Souls combat. You, you already fucked it up. Yeah, but that's part of the fun. Kind of like killing it and then, you know, starting from scratch. Again. The modding yeah. is more fun than the actual game. I can't believe you've done that again. It's I mean, just how I do. Just how you do. It would be uh, real bad if I started with Special Edition again, but... Nah, Skyrim original runs better, looks better. Breathes better, it's... talks better, walks better. Uh, just like you, it's true. You see, it's you, should be do. I wanna be like you. 
Welcome to a video game podcast where we sing fucking Disney songs. Is it Disney? Yeah, it's yeah. Disney. Jungle Book's Disney. I can't believe you Why doubted that. Why a Disney princess? I will clothesline you. Um. So I've been playing Skyrim. <laughs> I've been playing Age of Wonders 3. Uh. Um... Age of Wonders 3 is pretty great. I don't really like Civ, it's pretty boring. So Age of Wonders 3 is like that that primo uh, Civ experience. That makes, yeah, yeah. If you want to play Civ, it has actually got cool shit like making spells and like um, hiring heroes to fight for you and uh, RPG style combat. In, uh, it's got, it's what got, is it with you and your fucking RPGs? I like RPGs. I noticed. It's, it's, it, it, it hasn't got simple damage numbers for the units. You build your own units to an extent. Uh, I units are pre unit. pre Units are pre-made, yeah. Yeah. But you can equip them with shit. And they also level up. I guess that happens in Civ as well. Yeah. And you can also get monsters and shit or summon units or cast spells. Even your main character, if he's not in a fight, can cast spells in the middle of the fight. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. So if you're halfway across the map and your gen your army is not taking a certain fight well, hmm. if you have the mana, you can the what? cast mana, mana, whatever. The mana. You can, yeah. You can cast the fireball or something or like a meteor to come down from the sky. Yes, uh, I, I but there's also spells things. that like protect your cities and do damage to people who walk into the city boundaries, stuff like that. Um, so you know, as much as you talk about this game now, no matter how much you get into it, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna let go that you just said mana. What's wrong with mana? Mana ain't that bad. You mean mana? Mana, mana. It's mana from heaven. Mana from hell. It's it's mana, mana from mana. hell. Okay. This is the made of tomato, but dude. Um, yeah, um, it's like saying potato, potato. Uh, no one says potato. Same as no one says mana. Mana. What do you mean? I ate some potatoes and uh, fish the other day. <laughs> I'll kick you off the street, uh, the cast. I'll kick you off the cast, cast. Yeah. Live on stream. Okay. Um, I also ate it with some lettuce. Um, <laughs> right, I've got a fucking I, message, Ellie. Where is she? I also played some Lisa this part, uh, this week as well. Lisa's oh, yeah. a fucking great game. Oh boy, Lisa's a great game. Um, Lisa. I'm getting closer to finishing it with uh, my good friend Edward's help. Is it, so that's nice. is, it, is it tearing you apart? Ha! <laughs> and um you had to give me a second laugh there. But, I don't know, you know easy. you wanna. You know you wanna. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You did it. That, that's all you get though, sir. Good day. Good day, sir. You lose. You lose. Good day, sir. Um so uh yeah, Lana. Age of Wonders, Lisa and uh uh Skyrim. Uh, I think I've talked about Lisa on the podcast before. Um, it's got a really good soundtrack, hmm. really good RPG mechanics, um, while being hard as shit. It's like hard as shit Pokemon. Um, that's kind of how the RPG mechanics work. It's like so you mean Pokemon, but you decide to choose actually this. no, that's not true. It's not like a rock paper scissors kind of thing. It's um. It's more a kind of abuse the system kind of thing, otherwise you're never going to win. Yeah. And I played another game that was like that before, if you've ever heard of uh, Divinity, Original Sin. Yes, yes, I have heard of that. Does yeah, that, also give that game's mind? hard as shit unless you abuse the system. You have to fuck with the mechanics, my dude, otherwise you're never going to win. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, no. Uh, and that was your yeah, week? Yeah, that was my week. Um, non-video game related with my week, I played, uh, played, I watched all of 
the new Netflix series, The Umbrella Academy. Oh yes, uh, by Jared Way. Oh, the uh, is that the comic or is it the director? Um, that's uh, the guy who wrote know. the comic. Oh, okay. Also known uh, for being in My Chemical Romance and uh, now referred to as Jared Get Out of My Way because he's so fat now. <laughs> you can't say that. Who's going to stop me? Yeah, who is going to stop you? Uncensored! Live! That's his podcast right now. Um, so uh, To be fair, he is, he's, a, he's a chunky monkey now. Yeah, just like uh, good old Tomska, right? Yeah. He's still, got it. He's still got it in him, though. Hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, I ain't such a for for the for for people who won't be listening on the stream, by the way, in the future, uh, I to fucking I got belly myself, um, but uh, which I showed on the stream, by the right. way. Um, I'm now googling pictures of Gerard Way, and I'm not finding him quite chunky, but so unless I'm on the stream, unless I'm remembering the wrong uh, geezer. Um. In any case. The screen captures. Totally recommend the Umbrella Children, uh, Umbrella Academy. Very, very good. The One of the best children. Netflix dramas that I've seen in a while. Yeah. Oh, so, would, um, would you recommend to give it a solid eight or nine? If this, if this was a meme review, how many claps would you give it? I'm not familiar with the format. I assume more claps is better, right? Uh. Meme review! Meme review! How do you not know that? I don't watch PewDiePie. Elon Musk fucking directed that shit. Fucking, In any case, this is what I give uh, the Umbrella Academy. Okay. Am I doing it right? Uh, eight. You gave about eight claps there. Yeah. I still think you missed the joke, but either way, I'll accept that. He gets two retarded thumbs up from me. <laughs> uh, I love how like even your voice lost motivation to live halfway through that. <laughs> Just two retarded thumbs up from me. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fucking, I should make a spoiler video about it, or maybe we can have a spoiler part at the end if you, uh, uh, if you don't care about it. Maybe um, no. You care about it, okay? You want to see it? Um, mainly because well, we're game related, and you know people may want to watch it. So yeah, true. We're yeah. getting a bit. We'll, we'll get a bit sidetracked if we do that. True, 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 I will yeet you out. True, 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 true. How was your week, man? My week? Um. Give me two seconds, because I literally got a message that I have to reply to right now. Okay, done. Right, my week. What have I done this week? Mm. Me, yeah, review. Tell me about it, boy. Um. Oh. Right, so. And that was my week. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, oh, Andy, could you get a uh, a window up to reflect onto your face? Because uh, we can't see your face anymore. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to look at the stream, brother. But uh, I'll do that. Fucking buy a mm. lamp. Um, No. Lamps are done. I need um I need like either grease proof paper or um like tracing paper of some kind so I can put it over my lamp, diffuse it a bit. Uh no. You thinking you're looking a bit overexposed, because I don't think so. No, 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 it's, it's the light's a bit too harsh, I just want to diffuse oh. it a bit. Actually I could go a little bit brighter. Oh boy. How's that? You're How's looking, that? You're looking deaf my boy. How so, is that? My week, my week. Ah, right, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 uh, Miami, uh, uh. I completely forgot what I did this week, and that's why I'm stalling. <laughs> um, I'm sure you did some stuff. I played EDF. Yeah. Did some yeah, good on true. EDF, yeah, yeah. Um, Save yeah, that, the world. Uh, 
No, more like I got fucked over repeatedly. Oh, okay. Have you finished a level in it? A what? A level. A level. Yeah. Is it hard? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm on, like, uh, mission seven. How thing... many are there? Um, I have no idea. The thing is, like... Um... Right. If you play online, the difficulties limits what level weapon you can have. So say if mm -hmm. you've got a level 40 weapon and you're playing on like normal difficulty, it'll yeah. limit you to like uh, level 15 weapons mm -hmm. sort of shit. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to complete every mission on every difficulty because apparently if you can get more than 70% completion, in theory, I don't know, I'm just testing it and fuck it, why not? I get to play the game a lot more times, why not? Um, If I get to... um. If I complete the game 70%, I get to use all weapons online, regardless of what difficulty I'm on. Sure, I'm doing that. And then you could be that cool guy who uses the super weapons while everybody else is just using the M4 or some shit. Yeah. So, um, basically, what I've been doing is I've gone through every difficulty, obviously easiest piece of piss, and I'm not progressing until I've completed all the levels on a previous level up to at least Inferno, which is the mm. highest difficulty. So if I can't, like... If I've got everything completed but Inferno, then I may progress to another level if I can't be asked for that shit. Because every difficulty is doable. Every difficulty is doable with the tools you are given. Mm. Inferno, on the other hand, can it, it's like it's like having a nice cake, right? And then yeah. having coming up and s just dropping a steamy deuce on top of that cake. Mission one is the worst one. Because, like, right. How is mission one super duper hard on Inferno? Surely it would still ease you in a little bit, right? No. 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 In fact, mission two is better and um, easier on Inferno. In fact, every other. There's one specific characteristic, basically. Mm. The ants have a tendency to just run out after the nearest thing and kill them. Yeah. The last and final wave of ants that you go against, it, mind you. I could get up to the last and final wave of ants without taking damage. Pretty yeah. easy. Even on the hardest difficulty. The last and final wave of ants has usually obliterated everything. Because there's a lot of the fuckers. Okay? Yeah. So now they're all coming for you. Yes, and they beeline towards you no matter where the fuck you are. And I play as winged angels because they are overpowered as fuck. Um... But the energy from their backpack is used to make you fly, but it's also used to reload your weapons. So, so if you fly too often, then you can't, be, really. you can't shoot. But the thing is, if you overheat, you cannot use, you cannot fly and you cannot reload until you have gotten to the top. You can still fire a weapon, but once that weapon's out, you can't reload until your fuel's recharged. Right. When you've got a lot of fucking ants running towards you, faster than you, like, you have a walking speed of a normal fucking human. In fact, your, every character is really nonchalant. They don't sprint, they just... Come on, move faster. I can't see, I can't see you. Okay, I'm just, I'm bobbing up and down and swaying my arms a bit. Just imagine a... Oh, a he imagine a... Oh, uh, yeah, I can see you on the stream now. Imagine a hefty jog. Yeah, yeah. Alright. They don't sprint. So I'm sat there, like, fucking lasering these fuckers down and then I then I fucking run out of ammo so I have to fly away but I can only fly so far and these fuckers are so fast that no matter how far I fly when I touch down there's at least one near me so that means I have to then fly further so I can fucking reload at least so I can t keep taking these fuckers out and there's always one that comes up behind you and if they if they grab all you want you're dead mm. they do that fucking orange goose shit thing on you you're dead you die very easily. So it's fucking stressful as fuck. And do you know how scary it is to have a whole horde of ants beeline towards you? Even on top of a ta skyscraper, they beeline towards you. So my mentality is, alright, I'm going to make them run as much... Um, I'm going to make them run as far as humanly possible so I can touch down and... Basically, I travel a short distance, but they have to travel a f far distance. I can fly. Okay? Mm. So I hop from one building to another. By the time I've got to the other building, there's already one fucker already up there. They, they just don't give a fuck. They do not give a fuck, these ants. I hate EDF ants. In fact, I hate all of them. The spiders are actually surprisingly easy. 
It's just you have to sculpt down your fucking arachnophobia and just take down those fuckers. You know, I've got the game now. We should go on it together. Yeah, I've got... We should do that. Oh, do you know My flatmate's got it, you've got it, and Yarid's got it, so... I've got plenty of people to play with. But, yeah, no, it's really fun. Out of ten, how have you been enjoying the game? Ah, oh, it's really good, really good. I love how... Um, it's a, it's an interesting way. I wouldn't want it in every game, but in this game, it's interesting and fun. I like it. If you want yeah. to upgrade your armor, you just got to pick up armor crates. There's, there's, okay. crate, there's crates of armor. You pick it up. They don't apply in the mission, but after the mission, you get them. It applies to your character. And your mm. armor can just, just keeps going up. I don't know if there's a cap on it, but it just keeps going up. Like maximum armor for the mission. Yep. Like oh. it, it, it just increases your maximum health. And I, I find that cool. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. that's kind of what you need when uh, you're pretty much going up against an impossible to defeat enemy kind of thing. Sending waves after waves of amps. Yeah. But even like spaceships and giant spiders and. Uh, I got mecha. some spaceships, yeah, but I've seen this. I've seen them on a previous EDF game. Yeah. So I assume that they're going to show up. Well, no, I'm just going off of what I remember from like YouTube videos of EDF, and I think I owned EDF on the Xbox once as well. I think you had it on PlayStation too. I'm sure. No. No, I was on the Xbox 360. Either or, um, yeah, so that has been my week. Should we move on to your topic there, my boy? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's, it's uh, time to talk about my favorite DLC coming up, Man the Guns. Uh, Gan the Muns? Gan the Muns. Gan the Muns. Coming out in two days as of this recording. Um... It comes with a bunch of shit, and uh, I'm very excited for what it's coming out with, so let's talk about it. It comes uh, with a bunch of ships. Shit! Ah. Yeah. Uh, it does, in fact. It's also got a new ship design system, uh, where you can take new components and refit older vessels to take advantage of uh, the fact that you may have a successful navy that will drop off in performance in the base game and it'll be really hard to replace that navy um because newer ships are harder to build um so now with that in mind you can upgrade older ships with new newer parts and now everything kind of evens out a little bit i don't think they'll be as good but uh, as newer ships, but there we go. They've got a new um, uh, Navy battle screen, which looks a bit cleaner. They've got a fuel system. Um, some of this shit isn't on the actual Steam page, so I'm half going off memory and half going off that. Yeah, uh, I've currently got the they've Steam got page a new full anyway. fuel system that I think affects tanks and everything as well. But uh, it's definitely mostly for ships, and um, uh, running out of fuel is actually a big... I, I want to call it a plot point in World War II. W would you call that a plot point? A, uh, a big historical factor in World War II was fine, uh, yeah. the Germans running out of fuel, and the decisions that the Germans had to make um, because of that, yeah. um, in terms of invading Russia in order to get to the oil fields. Um, so that will actually force you to actually make those kind of decisions like, shit, I have no oil fields. I can't keep up this huge army with the amount of oil I have in reserve. I'm going to run out in about a few months. I need to get to them. I have to take them. So, yeah. so there you go. Hmm? So basically it brings a, another tactical element to the war. Yeah. Before yeah. you used to just take ports and stuff, and hopefully that would starve them as supplies. Yeah. Um, even. Uh, it wouldn't even. Yeah, it would be supply, but it'd just be like basically food and medicine and stuff yeah. is what um, it's supposed to mean for supply. 
But um, if you have cities, then that would be good enough in some cases, you know? Um, or if you have ports elsewhere. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a new element of strategy that a game will have. Um, so it also has a new governments in exile system. Yes, uh, so yes. government in exiles in the base game is basically it just remembers who has claims to land um, uh, when a country is taken over. So for example, you're Czechoslovakia, no better example. You're France, yeah, no better example because France England. acts weird in the game. England also. Um, you are Poland. That's oh. the best example. Poland. You're Poland, and you get invaded, yeah, by Germany, as that happens a lot in the game. <laughs> Does it? It's usually the uh, first thing you fucking do in the game. Yeah, well, I do, yeah. Uh, you're not supposed to, but I think it's pretty fun. Um, so... As Poland, you're now an exiled government. You're a government without their land. And what that means in the base game without is... Borders. No, there's no military anymore. But what that would mean in the base game is that... I know what you're saying. I know the joke. I, I appreciate the you joke. You get it. He gets it, man. He gets it. He's finally picked uh, up on it. No, no, I got it from the beginning. Uh, <laughs> um, well, he acknowledged it and that's all I want. In the base game, when democracies invade a fascist puppet or a fascist uh, country that used to, that is annexed uh, a country, they bring that country back when they invade it. Yeah. So England invades Poland at that point, then Poland becomes the old monarchist Poland again, or democratic, depending. Um, in the governments and exile system, you can now make friends with these exiled governments beforehand and start training troops that are veterans that have run away from uh, the occupation. Uh, and you can also uh, make decisions in that regard. So they've tried to expand on different democracies because democracies are a lot more boring to play in the game. Um, I see. Like I was thinking the other day, actually, like yeah, what say you know France? France loses their government. Well, yeah, that you know, that's boring. What's going to happen then? Like you know, oh, well, Fra everyone's France everyone's going to you know bow their knee and be like, oh yeah, we're going to accept this new Nazi government. No, you're going to have freedom fighters within that. Well, that's to skip... already in the game. I've never experienced it. To be fair. Oh, players Germany, and it's a fucking pain in the ass. If you don't set up Vichy France, then you get freedom fighters fucking everywhere. You have to make military police to put them down. Uh, um, fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. And that's just manpower taken away from the war effort. Um, no, it's expanded upon, so... Yeah, it's, uh, it's great like that. Hmm. Um, so... Yeah, you could train troops from these governments. What else? Uh, admiral traits and skills. They're bringing in new shit. They're bringing in admiral traits and skills. So what is that? That's fucking... You know how generals have different abilities and perks related to them? Admirals now have the same thing. So they can level up, I assume, and you can assign new skills to them in the same way as Waking the Tiger. Um, shipping route controls so now you can uh, save your convoys by changing the route that different uh, resources such as iron nickel, uh, aluminium oil, stuff like that that you want to bring into your country you can change the route that they'd come in and they'd take longer to come in but now they're a bit more hidden in terms of uh, where the allies or the Axis be able to interdict and uh, destroy them. 
uh, saving you convoys, which is extremely important for transporting troops. Um, naval treaties. You can... Uh, I don't actually know much about this part. It says, uh, struggle to keep the peace by following international agreed upon rules or create creatively defy the world's con consensus by executing your exceeding your own limits. So I assume that's, that's to do vague. With, I assume that's to do with because I know where countries have limits in which um, you can only go in certain waters because they're owned by te other territories. Yeah. So I think this is just saying because it was there, don't it, go into it, American waters. Don't go into. There was a bit like of land it. between sort of. In, in Africa somewhere, and there was a slipstream through this, um, there was a passageway ships would go through because it would be quicker, yeah. co instead of going all around Africa. Um, yeah. But someone took on this land and stopped them, and then they just went, fuck it, we'll invade you anyway. And the Suez Canal. Yeah. So yeah. it's that effect, wasn't it? So I assume it's something to do with that. Or... Uh, well, you can, you can already do that in the game. So it's, uh, it's gotta be something different. You say this, but I I fucking understand none of the game at the moment. I just know I draw lines <laughs> and see what happens. Uh, yeah, you can you can already block people from going through uh, canals if you own them, but there's only two in the game. You forgot the most you know coveted bit of this whole DLC. Focus trees. No new music. Hey. Um. No, no one gives a shit about that. Um, <laughs> I do. The music's a bit samey in the game. Um, so yeah, the whole bit DLC is pretty much to help democracies be more fun. Uh, so more on what they've done with that. They've added new focus trees to two more democratic nations. Uh, the United States and the Great Britain. Uh, I, sorry, is it, what, what was it called in this game? The United Kingdom. Uh... I don't know the history. <laughs> I should do. It's my history. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh... United Kingdom. Yeah, United Kingdom, isn't it? I, 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 the reason I'm confused is that you can form Great Britain as one country who is loyal to the king as part of the new focus tree and rebuild the British Empire and retake the colonies after they run away from you. Yeah. So that part of the focus tree is new. You could also become even more democratic and break up all of the colonies including Africa into their own separate nations. Um, which is good. Um, in America, they put in a new Senate system and a uh, House system. A Congress system, really. If um, I don't get to say I am the Senate, I'll be disappointed. Emperor Palpatine mod. Win. Um, there's, a, there's a Palpatine so, mod in Skyrim and it is the, the bee's knee. As America, you can make different, um, as the president, pacts and agreements with different uh, senators um, so that you can make sure that you get support and votes so that you become the next uh, ruler, like the Democrats or Republicans will win. Um, it'll also... Uh, lead to more national unity or less national unity depending on how much support there is for the president um, it'll mean that you would or would not depending on how much support for the president be able to enact certain reforms within the country if they're fanatic towards you uh, I saw in one of the videos they were explaining if they're fanatic towards you that's how you start going down the fascist path, path and stuff like that so I think that's a pretty innovative, si well, innovative. I think that's a pretty good system. So uh, I'm you're saying that. there's more ways to uh, become fascist besides having a fascist demagogue or getting, um, you know, yes, influence. Yes, exactly. That is brilliant because I always thought that was just a shit system. It's like yeah, just waiting. Yeah, yeah. Po politics is like the most fun in this game besides you know owning half of the map. Yeah. You know? That, that's like one half the fun for me and then they say like yeah uh, you do this by going here's a demagogue have you ever played democracy I have and I thoroughly enjoyed it yeah okay nice uh, I love that game too it's pretty much exactly what you're talking about yeah 
Um, to be fair, I find it more funny in Hoi because then you can inf influence other nations around you. Like yeah, true. In in, de in in democracy, you can't reform the monarchy, but you can in Hoi Four, and then you can invade Germany as the Great British Monarchy. Um, I love this game. What else? Uh, focus trees can also go down stuff like bringing back the Confederacy, um, retaking the colonies as the British, uh, awesome. and stuff like getting back your colonies as the Netherlands in South Africa, or um, starting a civil war in Mexico to become fascist. Stuff like that. Um, in fact, I saw a YouTuber called Alex the Rambler playing Man the Guns early, and uh, he set the AI on non-historical, and apparently uh, Mexico got into three civil wars with itself. <laughs> so, yeah, that can happen. Now. Yeah, it's probably um, overall the fuel and drugs, so... Yeah, probably. Um... Yeah, the game's getting more alt history and more crazy. You can make the Australian Empire and stuff. I mean, you could before, but they've got more stuff in it. Um, and knowing Paradox, by the time the game actually comes out, not just the early shit that you've seen a YouTubers play, um, there'll probably be some hidden shit in it too. One last thing is that they've got amphibious motorized units now, such as amphibious tanks, amphibious troop carriers, stuff like that. Um... So put those in your marine templates for some extra wallop, I should think. Um, there you go. That's man the guns. Oh, naval mines. That's another thing. Yeah, there's a lot in this DLC. And I don't know what's going to come in the update and what's going to have to be in the DLC. I know that updates to the focus tree are in the update, not the DLC. But yeah. all history stuff in the focus trees are in the DLC. So... Take that, what you will. Um, just as a side thing, because I got heavily distracted. Um, I was looking for a mod that makes uh, makes everyone peaceful. So, I oh, just, I just want to see. Think we'll talk about it on YouTube and nothing happens. Yeah, like because Hitler Hitler starts the war and no one can invade anybody unless the uh, world tension is high enough. Well, I would like it. I would like a mod that's just like, oh yeah. No one's going to attack anyone, but if you push people's buttons, then they'll start attacking other people. So, uh, effectively, a mod that, if you were to leave it and do jack shit, then nothing will happen. You are literally Hitler in this scenario. You... I mean, whoa! You, ah! You'll be happy to know, because I completely forgot, but I saw it in one of the development things. Oh, yeah? That is coming to man the guns. You can set any country to be any ideology before you start the game. See, that's a nice idea, but the thing that bothers me is the fact that half the fun is going, ah yes, I'm democratic, now I'm fascist England. Yeah, but if you want, you can make everyone democratic except for you. <laughs> oh, yes. So that can lead to some interesting things. Uh, you could also play around if you're really good at the game and you're like, okay, I want to play as democratic France. What happens if Russia is also fascist from the beginning of the game, you know? That is one fucking hell of an alliance, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, there you go. Oof. Um, that's man the guns, man. I'm, well, I'm super excited for it. I know what I'm doing after this. I'm currently, um, I'm gonna mod that in. I'm gonna just invade everyone just because it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of stuff is just gonna come in the update, like the uh, set ideology stuff or set aggressiveness stuff or put AI stuff. Yeah, like the ability to just tweak some shit beforehand. Like, what if you want Hitler to be like fucking Gandhi? And what if you want. Uh, Mussolini to actually be good at his job. <laughs> so, you know. The great liability. <laughs> yeah, that was the man the guns. Oh, wait, hold on. That's almost the real quote. The great, uh, the soft underbelly of Europe is a real quote. 
It is. It is indeed. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That, so that was Man of the Guns then. Mm. Should yep. we move on to games we're excited for? Hells yeah. Also, um, Lemon Lime has chimed in with... Hello again, by the way. Um, chimed in with, he misses Reggie already. And that is something we will be talking about in a bit. In a bit. In, in a, a bit. bit. The in news bit. is coming. The when news the news is coming. News is coming, my boy. Um, my dude. Before my we move dude. on to games we'd like to see. Yeah? Can we take a five minute break? You want, you want to go for a little pee break? Little, little pee break. Little, um, little, little tinkle break. desperate. You've exposed my balls on, on stream, but yeah, it's a pee break. Exposed your balls on stream. You've never heard of that before. No. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. going to make me giggle. Ah, oh, dear, dear, dear. Yep. Little I, pee break. I think a break will come in handy, yeah. Um, I'll yeah. go down so and make a tea then. Right. God, I haven't put a break on in ages. There we go, there's the button. Yeah, we've been really good about that, but also our podcasts have become shorter, so... In any case... What is that, a podcast is shitter? Shorter, and shitter. It is definitely shit. It is. Alright, uh, see you in a minute, man. See ya. Are we on? Thank you. 
and we're back. Uh, sorry about that. I feel I was longer than I needed to be. He's all good. I boiled the kettle. I made the drink. Made my flatmate a drink. And then went, oh shit. The milk's off. So you had to run to the shop. No, no, we had, some, we had some spare milk. Um, it's red top. Uh, you know, uh, baked milk. Yeah. But what's it? What does he call it? Uh, baked water. Oh. Skimmed milk. <laughs> so yeah, um, my thought mate, he uh, he drinks skim milk because he's watching his weight and all that. Not like he needs to. He's skinny as fuck, but maybe he don't want a bulk. Yeah. Did I tell you about the guy who was on fit? There's a four chan board, by the way. Slash and like, fit. everybody says I'm fit, yeah. SS plus go mad. If you're a skinny dude who wants to get a ripped body, oh god, do exercise, which is SS, that's starting strength exercises, and then go mad, which is gallon of milk a day, gallon of whole milk, really, yeah. Oh, I remember go mad. Yeah. Because people did so that th in... Um... This dude makes a thread that's just like, Guys, I've been doing go mad and I've been shitting blood and I've lost a bunch of weight. Why isn't this working? I'm skinny as hell. It's like, no, go mad works, dude. What, what's wrong? Like, <laughs> is it... I've been having a gallon of milk a day. Because, Anon, you do know that's supposed to be with the, re like a, with the regular diet as well. Like, no, I've only been having a gallon of milk a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dipshit. See, I remember um, people doing Go Mad in the Aston back in the day. On, like, last day, people would go to the shop, buy a gallon of milk, and chug mm -hmm. it, and they ended up just throwing up. Yeah. I think one of your brother's friends did it as well, and I actually remember walking to Tesco, because I was in fucking sixth form, um, and it was just fucking... Um, blowing fucking milk chunks all over the place. It was actually hilarious. Ugh. Why? Why, though? Just as... <laughs> shouldn't you spread that shit out over the course of the day? Nah, you go mad. You go mad or go home. <laughs> go mad or go home. Oh, uh, where was we? Was on Games news, we'd like to we? see. Games we'd like to see? Hmm. <laughs> Games we'd like to see. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. one thing I'd like to see. There we go, we are back, baby! I'll tell you one thing I'd like to see. I'd like to see... I don't know where I was going with this, I just wanted I to like this. I thought you were referencing something. I thought I was too. I thought I'd reference something cool by the time. Did this just go out by itself? Yeah. What a piece of shit! He went mad or went home. I guess it did. I guess it did. Oh shit! I spilled a bunch everywhere. Ah, uh, no, uh, your spaghetti spewed everywhere. Okay. Uh, I have until the torch singes my fingers. Uh, okay. Let's just get it on the wood a little bit. There we go. Um, so I would like to see the new Man the Guns DLC, uh, Imperator Rome, but I've already talked about those two. So what else would I like to see? Uh, uh, Help me out here, because I'm not actually uh, uh, looking forward buddy. to many games other than those two, because I talk about them all the time. Uh, okay, they're about to... This is getting close, my dude. Doom Eternal. Oh, it went out by itself. Doom yeah, Doom Eternal, but we've also talked about that as well. Well, that's coming out relatively soon, isn't it? Which is... Uh, I haven't heard much about that. You know what I mean? Like, that's the problem with games to announce their release... Like, announce their existence way too early. You just mm. forget about them. But then when it does come out, you're just like, Ooh. Yeah, games will I see. Hmm. Games will I see. <laughs> um, okay, popular upcoming. Are you excited for Dirt Rally? No. Are you excited for Armored Battle Crew? No. It's got hair on my Are you excited for Nanobotic? No. Are you excited for Tank Mechanic Simulator? No. Are you excited for Loco Parentis X Adoption? No. Are you excited for Trials Rising? 
No. Are you excited for Anno 1800? No. Are you excited for the Lego Movie 2, the video game? That fucking straight, you know I'm all about that Lego, brother. Are you excited for Glass Masquerade 2, Illusions? So basically, there's no good fucking games coming out. That's all I'm hearing here. I, I think that's why we've uh, that's why we've fallen into this uh, slump with the games we'd like to see. It's kind of that part of the year, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's kind of fucked. Uh, that being said, there's other stuff like uh, Civ Six's uh, DLC. Is that out? Is that, Are you reading the out? same article as, um, that I read? No. Games Radar. No, I'm not reading that. I'm just on the Steam front page looking at uh... the popular upcoming shit. Right, can we just talk about the Games Radar? Like, fuck me. Right, okay. What? The Games Radar article that I read. Sure, but you have until this match has finished burning for you to answer... Oh, <laughs> what? And, what? It, and, it, and it stop with the matches. I don't... There's... That's not even enough time to sit there, take a gasp and go, I made a severe dr mis wait, is it lapse of my judgment. Sure it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking please, man. Um, so yeah, basically, I scrolled down to the bottom of this fucking article. It's like, oh yeah, here's games that are coming out. And then hit, there was a section called TBC. To be... Uh, not TBR. Continued. Which, not to be like to be released or to be announced or to be just TBC. I don't even know what the fuck the C meant in that. Anyway, Continue. down there was Fable 4, mm -hmm. a game to a series that is dead by mm -hmm. a company, by a developer that is also dead, mm -hmm. that is owned by a de publisher that don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. um, Sims 6 or 5, whichever one that said. Mm -hmm. They're not going to because Sims 4 kind of flopped and, well, the latest Sims game kind of flopped and they, uh, they've they also chugging out DLC for days, so they've got another 15 years on, on that fucker. Mm. Then, oh yeah, you can't have a games that are coming out wink wink nudge nudge without GTA. Oh, fucking... It was to be expected, to be fair. It's like the pinnacle of la lazy-ass journalism on top of... Yeah, just just above um, the Dark Souls of insert game genre here. Like, it was just lazy-ass fucking journalism by that point. Have you seen the pinnacle of that, by the way, on Twitter? Oh my fucking god. Dark Souls is the Ikea of video games. The IKEA video. How the fuck is it the IKEA video? Oh no, I didn't click on it. Why would I click on it? <laughs> it's just got retweeted a bunch though. I was like, oh, that gave me a hearty chuckle. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, fuck it. Don't make games. Don't talk about games. Just fuck it. We're gonna we're gonna close the podcast down. We're gonna rebrand it, and we're just gonna talk about politics. What? Why? Is the games not worth it to you anymore? Just is that what this fuck joke it. is? Fuck it. Yep. Yeah. No, games, okay. games, games industry is dead. Nothing but indie developers now that do nothing but fucking pixel platformers. Fucking sick of it now, man. Just giving up. Uh, you know what? Kojima's been fucking fired. Uh, Satoru Was is dead. Um, Reggie. Reggie's so... fucking left. Uh, Konami are making fucking nothing but pachinko machines. Uh, fucking this, this games industry is dead, man. Nah, it's still got some good shit. Yeah, you're right. Paradox. I suppose I'm being dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another hundred episodes of the GGWP podcast saved again. <laughs> Fought by Paradox. That's it. We got the episode name right here. Saved by Paradox. No, no, no. I hate it. Thank you. Thank you. Destroyed Paradox. by Paradox. I love it. I'm going to do a Stellaris stream after this. Hopefully I won't blue screen. I don't think I'll blue screen. No, you'll, you just, you just black screen. You, you won't even hit the blue. You'll just straight up black. That's racist. You're racist. Fuck you. Fuck you too. News. Nudes? Nudie nudes. 
Newt. Newt, newt. Newt, newt. Sorry, I, the music just kind of stopped. I don't know why, so I'm just kind of... Uh, this is the highest quality podcast on... We like YouTube. to... We like to make sure that we've got the highest of qualities, the previous highest of maybes. We are totally not filling for time. We are Why not filling for fucking ever time. Say, Don't, Why would, yo, get the oh, fuck out my stream if you said that. Fucking, you bastard. You yo, fucking hold me back, bitch. Andy. Fucking, fucking fuck hold me back. You. Fuck you. <laughs> I love this podcast. Here at the GGWP, we don't respect your time. We don't respect you. We don't, don't even know you. I don't even respect myself. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, we're not excited for any games. Should we move on? Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on to the news. Hey, uh, here's a bit of the news, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, in news uh, for the PC... Uh, Paradox has decided to make a brand to new God. game, uh, Imperator Rome, which I have pre-ordered. <laughs> Andy, I swear to God, if you do not get us a sponsorship by fucking Paradox, just for the meme, I will be upset. I want it. It wouldn't just be for the meme. I want it. Okay. I mean, I'd love, a, I'd love a sponsorship. It would actually put bread on the table. No, 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 bread. I, I don't even know what bread tastes like anymore. That's how poor, huh? I, I'm not eating. In three Thanks, weeks, Theresa man. May. I, 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 I'm not eating in three weeks, man. You think this is a meme? I'm crying out for help, man. Just, just fucking post me a loaf of bread. Not even a loaf, a slice, man. Just fucking. Nah, fuck you. You have tea. You um, can't get benefits. Uh, it's, it's fucking, it's, fuck you, mate. Fuck you. Just go and go mad. It's fine. <laughs> Callum. <laughs> uh, is that how you gain weight? I mean, I, I, I'll chug milk. Yeah, uh, that, that's how you gain weight. Uh, right. I'll regular. Definitely read up on it first before you do any diet, because you don't know if you're doing it. You don't want to do it wrong, and then you hurt yourself. So, if I shit blood, it'll make my day. That's another quote for the podcast. This high quality content. On if could someone please clip that, um, and we'll just uh, Andy get on it, clip that bit right now. Come on, and I'll fucking. Uh, put, I I'll... don't know how to clip stuff on Twitch. I'm shit. At Twitch. You go onto Twitch, you press Alt X, and then you fucking clip that shit, boy. Oh, okay. I'm going on to reverse it, Alt X, that was Control X, Alt X. Oh, that worked. Cool, I'll just make the whole thing a clip. There we go. Shit, blood. You have to make sure it actually fucking says shit, blood, otherwise you just got like a twat who's just called a random clip. Says, shit. Whoops, something went wrong, blood. Boom. We did it. I don't know if it's correct. Afro. Okay, first piece of oh, news. Please never say that again. Thank you. You can't play Crackdowns 3's <laughs> multiplayer mode, yeah? Oh With... shit, yeah, we talk about the news. Forgot about that. Yeah, we sometimes talk about video games on this podcast. Yeah, other times we talk about politics, Doctor, and shit in blood, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and Circus Afro. Tell me about fucking Crackdown, my boy. Uh, so, at launch, you can't play multiplayer with your friends at all. So I think last week we talked about how, uh, the destruction physics are shit. Or did we talk about that? Uh, well, the destruction physics are shit. Uh, they they also, wanted they, that, we... but they never got around to being able to do that. I'm correct. Right. Even though they showed it off. That was, like, fucking pre-alpha shit. But the technology was there. They, they, they did it. Don't mean it's fucking achievable for modern day systems. They said that they it was because of cloud computing. Don't even. Fuck Yet again. Do not fucking. Cloud do computing. It. Don't fucking say cloud is computing. Is the man. shittest. Fuck off. The shittest. Yo, cloud. 
Cloud computing is the same as fucking blast processing. You don't mean jack shit. It potentially does, no, it but doesn't. the ball. The Fuck bottleneck now isn't regular PC parts bottlenecks that you would expect. The bottleneck now is your internet connection. So what's the fucking point? Because a lot of people don't have fast internet. That means your FPS is going to be based on your internet. I mean, you say this, but I'm currently just uh, sat here trying to see if I can buy Crackdown. Stop. I miss that game. Is it a game? You're a piece of shit. Is it? You're a piece of... Stop. Nothing wrong with it. I miss it. Stop. Microsoft fucking where the fuck is your pissing buy button? In any case, the Terry Crews Bruise Crews um, is not very good. It's got a ton of problems. Don't buy Crackdown 3. Uh... I can't believe you didn't laugh at what I called it. And... <laughs> I don't know, no. I got a chuckle. I was just being professional for once. <laughs> it, it took me a whole half a second to think of that one. <laughs> Crackdown Bruce Cruz. The Terry Cruz Bruce Cruz. Um, uh, yeah. So here's a little quote thrown at you from the Microsoft spokesperson. Players will soon be able to take full advantage of the Xbox platform's party features so that they can experience the fully destructible environments in Crackdown 3. However, I'm a gay poo-poo butthole, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing. And we well, it's not in the game yet. And, How much uh, of this are you ad-libbing right now, boy? This is basically a Ponzi scheme, is what he said. That's an actual quote. Uh, no, up to... Uh, uh, up to him saying that it's coming soon. So <laughs> fully destruct destructible environments are coming soon, but they're not here yet, and they look like Loud shit. computing. The game looks like shit. Loud computing. Yeah. Uh, 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 another spokesperson said... Hey, delays can be a positive thing. This is a quote, by the way. Offering developers time to refine and polish a game. That was Chris Perriera. Yeah, because uh, the fucking uh, shitty-ass fucking publishers don't give them enough time. And that, that wasn't a spokesperson, by the way. That was a critic. So, You're a critic. Uh, um, I'm just going to say something, and I, I'm just going to hope that people can understand uh, the metaphor or the simile that I'm trying to do. A sweet home, Alabama. Okay, um, so I'm gonna just let that be understated. See if um, people understand. What are, you I'm referencing, are you referencing Con Air, the greatest no, movie No, I'm of saying all time. that they're incestuous as fuck. Uh, next news story uh, A Final Fantasy float is coming to the Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras Parade. Yeah. If, if you like the gay series and the lesbian series, um, this parade is a is a pretty good. It's like Fire Emblem Cross uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Gay games. and Lesbian has been a very good long running series that uh, I myself uh, prescribe to, but only half the time. Um, in fact, Gay uh, is due to get a sequel soon called Trans. Uh, Stay. Andy, can you please stop referring to fucking gay? The LGBTQ is a fucking game. We all know that the trans is a patch. They are patching in trans. It's oh, DLC. they're patching in the trans. Sorry, it's <laughs> DLC. <laughs> um, hey, it's the, oh, the Sydney Gamers, which is a very clever name, uh, says... Hey, you know that it this... means that we'll receive a lot of support, validation, and acknowledgement and from more such patches. a force in the industry. Um, not only that, more developers will be working on gay and lesbian, uh, which is basically like po Pokemon uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green. <laughs> gay and lesbian. You know I'm going to fucking call, call this pod, um, this episode, the gay patch. <laughs> the gay patch is... <laughs> DLC trans update. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> what does trans come with? Well, you can get more uh, clothing for your lesbians and gays as in the mandatory update, but to get the actual whole trans system, uh, you need to buy the DLC. We're going with the par- is like a paradox game. We're going with the paradox DLC. updated system. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Being... March the 2nd is when this parade will take place. Saturday, March the 2nd. Catch it. It's Mardi Gras. Go see a bunch of people be naked in front of children. Um, uh, you, that that ten... sounded completely um, wrong if you don't get the reference. I got the reference. Yeah. I probably shouldn't explain the reference, though. Uh, you probably um, should explain the reference. There's uh, something about that just sounds very mm, distasteful. No. <laughs> no. Okay. There's a reference there. We're not just random um... homophobes. Yeah. Um so he is and he's bi. <sighs> Why do you have to explain that, man? That is homophobic. Come on, man. I can I can be I can be critical. No, I'm, I'm literally saying you're homophobic. I'm not homophobic. Are you I sure that's pretty good? Okay. your dick the other day. Um, I'm still thinking about it now. That, that made no sense. Is it bad that as soon as you said that, I look over to my screen and I see the words Smash Cast? What's the Smash Cast? It's a, it's a streaming thing, but I just thought we're on a podcast and we're talking about gay shit. I would listen to a podcast called the Smash Cast. Do you want to rename this podcast the Smash Cast? Will we just be having great, egregiously ho- homosexual to each other? Yeah. Yeah. It would make up for um, all the gay hate that we have right now. The gates. I should watch gate. They shoot dragons with what military the fuck's gay? It, it's a. It, it's not what you think. It's not to do with gay people at all. I just you said it, and I was just like, it's an anime where a gate opens up, okay. and all these fantasy creatures come into modern day Japan, so and they have magic and shit. Oblivion. Yeah, basically. Except it, what happens is what should happen in these stories Living because forward. they get absolutely destroyed by the fact that modern technology will just kill all these people, magic or no. So they ju- just orcs and like dragons are just being shot down by art- artillery. That is fucking hilarious. Yeah. And then they go through the gate and invade the fantasy world because... They declared war first. I mean, to be fair, this sounds like that South Park episode where they declared war on Butters' is, um, imagination. I haven't seen that episode. Fucking hilarious. Anywho, back to the news. Hey, top 10 games. What would you think would be at number one in the UK? Um, is this an actual news story? Yes, it's a news story. Okay, carry on. No, what would you think? Uh, at number one, the UK. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. At them. You keep shoveling it, we'll eat it up. That's dumb. Now tell me what the actual number one game would be. It's Anthem. That's dumb. Tell me what the number one game is. It's Anthem. That's dumb. Tell me what the actual number one game is. Number one is Anthem. Far Cry New Dawn is number two. And, and Red you're, Dead saying Redemption Apex two is number three. you're saying Apex That's... Legends wrong. You're saying Apex Legends wrong. We just. Huh? I'm, you know, I'm going to stop this news segment just to say one thing we appreciate that ea has been advertising anthem for almost for about two years now at least two years okay yeah hyping it up advertising fucking loads of money's gone into that shit yeah it's flopping hard Um, and look at apex legends also another ea game Mm -hmm. that's had no advertising and it's doing fucking brilliantly like I bet you the fucking CEO of Microsoft is going down to the fucking creators of Titanfall, you know, uh, for what the fuck they're called, and they're going, do you want to sit in my gold hot tub whilst I personally jerk you both off? I assume there's only two developers in that team, but... No, nah, I know where they're going. They're going down to the pit. You know what I mean by the pit, oh, right? Yeah, they're going to make you crank out more. They're going down to the Minecraft pit. Go down there, you're going to be cranking. Mm-hmm. Get down there and start cranking. Notch's will to lives down there as well. Jimmy, Jimmy from marketing, he said that Battle Royale was in Minecraft before anything else. 
<laughs> so Jimmy from marketing is going to make you have Minecraft on the Xbox games. That's what I'm thinking. No. Anyway. Yeah, carry on then. Uh, UK, I'm very disappointed in you. Um, yeah. Is that it? That being said, it is noted that the reason Anthem is number one in UK sales is because it's a very slow season because all the games coming out are shit. Um, in fact, um, Anthem has sold half of Mass Effect's Andromeda's numbers. Oh. So, yeah, nobody wants Anthem. I mean, to be fair, half of Andromeda at... Uh, wait, oh wait, you want to sell Andromeda, not Apex Legends. The matter then. Yeah. Um, it's it's also kind of hard to tell how many people are playing Apex Legends. Uh, Legends. It's not on Steam, so you can't track or it, and it's not got sales numbers other than loot boxes. That is true. So, you want to talk about a? It, maybe they'll put numbers up. I know Fortnite does. But they don't have to. Yeah. They'll um, definitely do it for some milestone. Let's say they hit 10 million players. Yeah. But, uh, the only way you can judge the size of Apex is like Twitter mentions, <laughs> I guess. Um, um, can you judge how big my pecs is? Uh, it sounds like abs, pecs. Um, quality. Quality on this podcast. I hate you. You're dumb. I hate you. Do Go it. fuck yourself. I tried that. <laughs> so yeah, next news story. Hey, you remember Hellblade from a while back? Oh. It's a video game. You're just gonna stop there. It's a video game. Thanks, guys. Nah, it's a pretty good video game. It's got the good graphics. It's got the, it's got the uh, hot girl, and you go down into hell, and the girl has a uh, mental illness or is possessed. One of the two. Yeah, and, it's, it's uh, mental illness. Everyone sat there prayed in that. Yeah. Um. Part, part of the cool thing about the game is that it's got great audio. Oh, yeah. And because you have like a schizo either schizophrenia or you're possessed, you can hear schizo what? voices whispering to you. you mean schizophrenia, not schizophrenia. Potato, potato. Man, okay. Potato, potato. Potato. Anywho, Hellblade um, is great like that. It's got pretty basic but pretty functional combat and an amazing story and that mechanic of hearing those schizophrenic voices. Like, it's hard to explain. They give you tips, but they don't outright tell you tips. You have to listen in the sea of whispering and noise, you know? Yeah. Do you get me? Like, so, where, where are you going with this, anyway? It's coming to the Switch. Thank you. <laughs> and, but since the graphics are, like, crazy stupid fucking good, I don't know if it'll look as good when it does come to the Switch. Um, but uh, I hope it does. It'll be interesting. Hopefully it's just filters that make the game look so good and not, like, god-beautiful textures, you know? God damn those textures. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna look at some Hellblade pictures and try and see if there are any uh, degradation techniques uh, that they use that I would be able to understand to make it look so photorealistic. Because all of the game is rendered rendered in, in engine, to my knowledge. Look how good this game looks. Uh, you could put that on the stream. Hey, what? Uh, 
Uh, I put it on the stream, is what I'm saying. I'm putting pictures in the podcast chat. Ah, uh, right. Um, yeah, all of that's in engine, to my knowledge. Game looks fucking great. Where is it? There it is. Podcast chat. There it is. Yeah, fucking amazing. So, um, yeah, uh, get ready for help. There we um, go. Sony's video game division gets a new boss. Yeah, fucking beautiful, isn't it? Are they big? You That's chose a fucking tiny image here, Andy. I'm sorry, I just copy and paste to it. It's not so tiny in the chat, but whatever. The first image is definitely... I think it's because I chose the thumbnails. Yeah, maybe. No, I, yeah, I did. In any case... Uh, hey, you ever heard of Jim Ryan? That was the shittest transition you've ever done. Moving on. <laughs> Thank you. So yes, tell me about Jim Ryan. The Jim Ryan Jim the is... Brian Ryan. Okay, so... Jim the Tyne Ryan. Sony... Sony's video game division, SIE, yeah. SIE. The CEO is John Cadera, yeah. Yeah. But he's stepping down. He wants to become the deputy president. Yeah. And the head of the company is now going to be head, headed by Jim Ryan. And what has he done before? Jack Shit. He was, he was the deputy president. So this is really not news at all, actually. I don't know why it's here. They're just swapping places. Um, Yoshida, the owner of Nintendo, I assume. I think he is. I've heard the name before. Is Yoshida? I said Nintendo. I meant Sony. The industry is relentlessly fast moving. And to remain the market leader, we must constantly evolve ourselves with a sense of urgency. Um, imagine what I'm saying in a Japanese voice, however. Based on extensive discussions with John, I have decided to change the management structure of SIE to ensure sustainable evolution of the PlayStation platform and further growth of the network area. That's so, oh, that's something I just picked up. What? Further growth of the network area. What has Sony been doing very recently in terms of networking? I couldn't tell uh, you. In terms of video games and networking. I couldn't tell you. In terms of compatibility with other systems. I couldn't tell you. That's my Okay, basically, that. basically, people want to play Fortnite with their friends on the PC and on the Nintendos and on the Xbox. Look, can I just hold you right there, man? Mm -hmm. People did want to do that. Mm -hmm. Now they want to play Apex Legends because Fortnite's dead. Um, People want to play cross-platform. Sony has been saying, eh, no cross-platform, thanks. Our players are too good for that. And all of the Sony players have been saying, what? Don't fucking speak for me, man. <laughs> what the fuck? No. no let us play with our friends. Um... So, I would assume that this decision has been made because Mr. Kodera is, like, making that decision, and Yoshida's not happy with the decision, so he's flipping them about. Yeah. So that he gets the decision that he wants, and uh, people buy more PlayStations. That makes sense to me. Yeah. That's a networking area. Okay. Um, yeah. Ryan said it was a huge honor to become the president and CEO of SIE. Uh, he said, I've seen the PlayStation business grow and change massively since the very early days, and I hope to be able to put that experience to good use in reinforcing the foundations of the game and network service business, and in evolving the pop entertainment that PlayStation offers to its engaged and passionate community. Uh, so there you go. But. Welcome aboard, Ryan. Uh, don't be such a cunt. That's Kadera. Don't be such a cunt. 
Many wise words right there, my man. Well, you know, that's just how to live your life, really, basically. Um, Sean Layden. Mark Laidlaw. The Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios boss, Sean Layden. Mark Laidlaw. Um, yeah? Mark Laidlaw. The former okay. writer for Half-Life. Why are you bringing that up, though? Because his name sounds similar, I wanted to throw you off. You won't win this time. Get out of here, Stalker. Layden says that he foresees a post console world where PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo are more unified than ever. Um, basically, he sees the PC because that already exists and people just get off your high horse and go into the PC. I'm bored with this story. Let's do another. Nintendo Direct is over. Where were you going? You got literally halfway through that. At least finish it's the It's a oh. shit story. It's a shit story. What was story? Some fucking big wig says, Woo lad. People are coming connected. Singularity's happening. Bitch, I knew that for a while. Ah, uh, dear. I don't want to put too fine a point on this because it may seem... Uh, it might upset some of the people I work with. But I think effectively, we're looking at some kind of post-console world where you can have quality game experiences across a variety of technologies, he said. Sure, PS4 and PS4 Pro provide what, of course, we think is the best gaming experience. But other consoles out there, be it Switch, Xbox One X, tablets or phones that are great experiences across all these, we need to recognize all that, he said. So, yeah. A fair dues, fair dues. Um, I, I respect that, but, you know, just fucking get on a PC. Just, uh, just do it. Just, you know, stop, stop buying DRM machines. DRM machines, brilliant. That's what they are. That is what they are. Um, Layden also gave information as to why Sony's not attending E3 this year. Would you like to hear it? Oh, yeah. Um, they had nothing to say. That's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah. Should we talk about Nintendo Direct? Yes, please. How about you take that over, because you actually watched it, I, uh, you told. Yep, and I've forgotten nearly everything about it. <laughs> um, yeah, do you like Dragon Quest? No. Oh, well then you're fucked. Fuck. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I've never played a Dragon Quest before. What are they like? They're just gonna. Um, all I know there. is they keep making their fucking way into my Smash games. Ah. Oh. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How is Smash? You've been playing it. I I don't even have a Switch. I thought you did. Sorry. No. I wish I did. Oh. I'm currently trying to uh, log into a Microsoft account so I can fucking uh, download Crackdown. Stop. Yeah, I don't even have Windows 10. I need to fucking just stop now, don't I? Yeah. Um, how's Apex Legends? Apex Legends Enjoy fucking that. lit, man. Ah, oh, love yeah. it. Love it. Tell me, tell me about Apex Legends. Good. Yeah. Playing a bunch of it. Who's your favorite character? All of them. Yeah. yeah. Wayfinder. Pathfinder, that is. Yeah. Um, I like, uh, what is it? Gibraltar. Play a lot Gibraltar. Of him. Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, Fat Man. Yeah. That was Nintendo Direct. So. <laughs> no, no, Nintendo <laughs> Direct is the. Meaty oh, sorry. Nintendo Direct is getting some games moving over. Mario Maker 2 is coming out. Oh, um, yeah. A lot of. Oh, there's a new Zelda game coming out. Uh, I think it's <laughs> Link Between Worlds or some shit like that. They get given that a port or some shit. Mm -hmm. Um. Basically, not a lot. We ain't getting a lot of shit, okay? There's a uh, there's a Metroidvania game that looks really fucking good. It's a 2.5D looking game. Um, mm -hmm. it's I think it's like Bloodbound or some shit like that. Uh, definitely wears its inspiration on the uh, on on its wrist, uh, on its sleeve there, sort of thing. Yeah. But um, no, it looks good. I'll definitely buy it. I'm not a fan of uh, side-scrolling games, but it's good. It looks good. Uh, what else was there? 
Oh, uh, Yanni 2 is coming to uh, Switch. Bayonetta 3 is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's roughly about it, really. Um, oh, and Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest. Do you like Dragon Quest? Because we've got a lot of Dragon Quest. I said no before, but I'll say yes now. Just say no. I don't know much about Dragon Quest, maybe. Is it, is, is it good? Do you fight um, monsters? Do something. You, fight, you, fight you, do, you do something. Sounds like Skyrim. Do something. I'd rather. Okay, play. time for the meat and potatoes of this podcast. You ready? Yep. This is what everything's been gearing up towards. Yep. Reggie fils as uh has. Ooh. Fired. Ooh. So, Reggie fils the President and Chief Operating Officer of Nintendo of America, will be retiring this spring. He has retired. And to replace him, the company's current Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing, Doug Bowser, will be uh, taking the helm. Good choice. Uh, fils said in a press, uh, press release that Nintendo owns a part of my heart forever. Oh. Uh, it's a part that will be filled with gratitude. For the incredibly talented people I've worked with, for the opportunity to represent such a wonderful brand, and most of all, I feel like the member of the world's most positive and enduring gamer community. Yeah. As I look forward to departing in both good and health and good humor, it's not game over for me, but instead leveling up to more time with my wife, family, and friends. Yo, know I just want to appreciate that he says. Like, he makes, like, a load of gaming references, but I don't feel like they're cringy. Not at all. He you, is fully in there. You know you know it's coming from his heart. Like, yes, he does sound like your dad making a gaming joke, but, like, at least that's the dad that plays games and not your granddad that goes, yes, you like the video games? I leveled up as well. Aha! And literally the closest he got was he opened up Snake by accident on his Nokia 2600 Classic. I want my grandma to say Bing Bing Wahoo for some reason now. Where the fuck does that even come in either? Because you said that your grand... You know... No you, you, you said that it's like your, like a granddad like fucking... Is, is coming up with gaming references and being cringy and saying like I want my grandma to be cringy now. No you don't. <laughs> yeah, I do. I think it'd be pretty funny where it's like, like game, uh, I love Banan, but I wholeheartedly appreciate that the fact she doesn't make game references. Not even Candy Crush references. No, she plays that unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My mom's fully in the camp of Candy Crush as a video game. Um, oh, my dad plays it as well, like all the time. Mm. It hurts my will to live. Boomers, am I right? They be like that. In addition to the message that Reggie gave, uh, he also made a video on Twitter, which uh, said, "Thank you for your never-ending support and for your passionate love of Nintendo, and personally for giving me a Mushroom Kingdom full of incredible memories that I'll never forget." Did he ever. just? Did he just say that he takes a fuck ton of drugs? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's Reggie. If that Go gif on, of him punching, uh, I forget who it was. Reggie. Uh, that, that's the best gif. He's high, okay. Go on, Reggie. Um, Shuntaro Furukawa, the president of Nintendo, made the statement that inside and outside of the company, Reggie is known as an exceptional leader. We're grateful that he's leaving the business in good shape and with strong momentum. And while we miss him, we wish him the very best in his retirement. We're also very pleased to have such an able successor ready to step into the role. And Doug Bowser and the rest of his team will ensure a seamless transition and continued momentum for Nintendo. No so one, who's Doug Bowser? No one has made a fucking point of... And no one in Nintendo has made a point of his name being called fucking Bowser. Yeah, it's kind of weird. They should really play on that. They, but they, uh, who is Doug Bowser? Um, he's King Koopa. Like, if he does not sit in his table, being a dictator, like fucking ordering people around with a giant shell on his back, I'll be fucking disappointed. 
Um, I can't wait for the new um, head of uh, Nintendo Japan, uh, Clive Ganondorf. Or um, the new executive over marketing, uh, Cassandra DDD. Uh, what else is that? Cassandra DDD could be a name. Um, fucking... I was going to make a Pokemon one, but your rival's literally n whoever you fucking named them. So, um, the new head of marketing, um, Dick Jimmy and Balls. <laughs> Based off of my Gary, uh, my Gary's always called Dick and Balls. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> Nintendo of UK, it's uh, me and Mario, the two twins. Um... Oh, no, they have to be villains. They have to be villains. I've decided. Oh, they that, have to be uh, villains. They have, they have to be villains now. Dracula, then. Um, okay. Is that Nintendo? No. It's Capcom. You really do be like that sometimes. Um, um, so, Doug Bowser, yeah. His last name is, in fact, spelt the same. So, what the fuck? Uh, he's an American businessman who Bowser. worked within no. electronic arts and a... Um, company called Procter and Gamble before oh, fucked EA's taken over. He uh, no, he worked at Nintendo for most of his career actually, and uh, he joined in 2015. Um, and he has been the senior vice president of sales since 2016, which seems to be the second in command, basically. So EA's I think he over. knows the business. No, it's no. I think it's not that. Bad. Why do you think he's Bowser? He's from EA. He's evil. He himself oversaw the promotion and release of the Nintendo Switch. So I think he does know what he's doing. He does know what he's talking about. He's taken up. Right it. Whatever. Can't <laughs> convince you otherwise. Fucking loot boxes in my Switch games now. Oh, you want a new fighter? You didn't look. Not a new arrival. Nah, you get old. nah, nah. That's last generation. This is this generation's 2019 <laughs> shit. You ready? Turn on your fucking Wii loot boxes right there on the screen. It's revolutionary. A new a new uh, challenger is entered the arena. It's just a fucking loot box, and maybe you can unlock the challenger you want. Otherwise, you <laughs> may just get a fucking spray. Do you want to unlock the uh, requesting? friends like inviting people to a group or how about do you want to unlock joining someone's game it's in a loot box somewhere. do you, do you know what do you know what i love though just japan like the japanese presence like yeah i'm pretty sure that uh yeah nintendo of america will be okay with all this meanwhile din din gentlemen v v but it's ah, had nazis of loot boxes <laughs> but v we'll fill them with sprays and v Will make anything you actually want be almost negligible amount of able to win them. Wouldn't we? Will overprice Germ them. I wonder what EA's German division was is like. You know, I wonder if they're actual Nazis. Let's move on before fucking Merkel bans us from her country. Ah, oh, whatever. You won't get the chance. We're no dealing out of this bitch. I'm um... fucking off to Germany in the, like next month, man. Whoops. Last thing Enjoy. I need is to be yeeted out just because of a comment in a fucking podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's the news. news? Ooh. That's the whole news. Right, moving on to my section, because I haven't spoken news, in a while. The whole news and nothing but the news. Right, so, you ready for this, man? I'm ready for this. I am fucking right. I am fuming! <laughs> Go on, man. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. So, you know, I said earlier, I need to remember what I was talking to my flatmate about. Yeah. That was fucking some juicy shit. Yeah. I remember what it was. <laughs> so, Apex Legend has been doing yeah. good. Yeah. Been doing good. Yeah. A, co a commercial success, even a retail success, I believe. Yeah. It's been doing good. I wanted it to I want it to look at the prices of some things. Loot boxes? No, no, no. They've got a system where you do have loot boxes, but you also have a, you know, able to buy what is on offer that day. Like Fortnite. Special, yeah. Special day offer, you know. Today we have this on offer. Will you buy it? Will you not? 
battle passes is that, what you're going to talk that about. Costs, that costs. I can't remember the exact uh, name of it, so I'm just going to call them rubles. That mm -hmm. costs 1,800 rubles. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You start off with 600 rubles. Mm -hmm. The minimum amount you can pay to get these rubles is £7.99. Guess how many rubles you get? 2,000. 1,000. I see. So, you are 200 rubles away from buying this gun skin you want. Okay? I gotcha. <laughs> Double the amount. You want that gun skin, you gotta... You gotta buy twenty pounds no, no, no. worth. Double, oh, yeah. double that amount, okay? You know, so double mm -hmm. seven pound. What is it? Fourteen. Uh, sorry, fifteen ninety-eight. Yeah, fifteen ninety-eight. Double that. Uh, what is it? Boy, what didn't get any free rubles? I got fucking six hundred rubles, but it wasn't enough to go with the other thousand rubles to insinuate. I was two hundred rubles away from getting this fucking gun skin, right? So. If you want to get enough, you've got to pay for 2,150 rubles. Again, I forget the fucking name, so we're just going to roll with rubles for a bit. Mm. Okay? That is double the amount. But to get 150 free rubles for buying, paying a higher amount... No, I just wanted to buy the skin. Okay? I didn't want to buy all these excessive rubles that are going to sit in my fucking wallet for eternity now. But I did. I wanted a skin. I wanted to put money into this game. I enjoy it. That looks at how much all this shit is together. And it's just so fucking much. Like, you can't buy specifically what you want. Instead, you have to buy an excessive amount so you have shit sat in your wallet now. Forever. And they overcharge this shit. It's like, why do... £7.99 for some fake-ass currency... Do what I spent then on this gun skin. £15.98 on a gun skin. I assume you've just blue screened. But I've just spent... I'm genuinely going to wait until he comes back. Be right back, boys and girls. Just going to see where the fuck he's gone. I'm still going to be here. I'm just going to the break screen. Just so I'll find out what the fuck's going on. Yep, he is gone. Hello? Hello? Yep, he's back. Fucking blue screens. At least it didn't happen during the news. Right, can you, uh, can you, uh, you not sound like a broken mess? A broken ass? Mess. You sound like a broken mess. There we go, you sound a little better now. What are you talking about? You sound like shit. Your mic is fucking horrendous. Hmm. Oh well. You there? <sighs> I think this is the worst. I think the, I think your mic's picking up through your headphones. Hello. <laughs> Bear with us, boys and girls. Technical difficulties, as, as always. How's that now? You sound tons better. So, would you like to carry on, man? Beautiful. Yeah. Ah, oh, right, yes. No, I did buy that as well. The 399 one that gave you 600 rubles. Yes, I did get that. Um, Didn't mean shit, though, because those rubles don't mean fuck all. Yes, no, you are correct on that one. I did buy that, buy that and I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, so, I effectively spent fifteen ninety eight to get a skin that I wanted, okay? This is a skin for a fucking gun. You know there's a chance of not even finding this gun with your skin on? Hmm. You may go a whole game and not find the gun. Um, Say you find it on someone else's body, you're not going to have the skin if they had another skin on it. It's fucking dumb, man. And you have an option to uh, to always change it to your skin. Um, I don't know. 
I'll be honest, I don't know. But, either or, it's fucking dumb. Like, 15 quid on a skin, but they overcharge the amount of these fucking rubles. Why is it? Mm. Why is it 1,000 costs 7 quid? They should be costing about 3 quid at most. For 1,000, then obviously 6 quid for 2,000. That's a lot more reasonable, don't you think? Not 15 yeah. quid for 2,150 rubles. And they do the same with loot boxes. It's a shitty fucking practice. And it really well, sucks because I'm, I am, I do still, and I will always say this, I think loot boxes are a good way of ensuring a developer's interest in a game without ensuring that they have to constantly make DLC. Like, yes, make DLC if you want to expand the story, but some people are like, shit, we need to release a fucking half ass map pack so we can get some money to actually carry on supporting this game. At least loot boxes ensure a longer... Not development time, but a longer support of the game without a yeah. consistent amount of work on it. But they, they fuck it. They fuck it real bad. Like, again, I want... A loot box should be anywhere from 10p to at most £3. Not fucking 7 quid. Because you have to remember, you can't buy the specific loot box by itself. You have to buy the minimum amount of these fucking rubles to then buy loot boxes. So you... It's all data. They're not losing something exactly. if they charge less. And you're paying seven quid for a chance, in specifically loot box, a chance to get what you want. Now, I know a lot of people divide up and go, oh, well, if you do the math this way, it's technically uh, fucking £1.32 for loot boxes. Yeah, you could do the math however the fuck you want, mate. Don't change the fact that they don't give you an option to pay thousand pound 32 to get a single loot box they charge you seven pound 99 for a arbitrary amount of loot box um rubles which will not perfectly divide into a set amount of loot boxes meaning you'll always have like 60 fucking rubles left so then that that is a, well, you can't that is directly a, buy loot boxes like, you can't directly buy a loot box. So a load of people, a lot of game companies do, you have to buy a cr currency that they invent to then buy loot boxes. And that's how they get you. Because that's just gambling. Everyone does it. Everyone does it. Fortnite does it. PUBG does it. Um, TF2 technically does it. Now, actually, you, know, you can straight up buy the key for it. But um, What else does it? A lot of shit does it. And you see why I'm so pissed off with it. Because, again, I'm sat here going, loot boxes are a good thing. Well, not a good thing, but they're a lesser of two evils if you do it correctly. Like, What's the other evil? Um, they just they just stop supporting the game because they don't have enough income coming in to actually viol validate doing so. Or... Literally just anything else that they can fucking do. Let's be honest. Just name a name a practice EA has created and cultivated and you can point at that and say that's worse than anything else. I fucking hate battle passes still. They could just Battle passes are better in my opinion. Yeah. That's fair enough. Like... You, if you if you wanna support the game, buy the more expensive one. If you actually play the game all the time, then buy the cheaper one and work your way up and get the same shit. And what's more uh, I've heard good shit about the battle passes in Apex. Maybe that's where you should put your money into. Uh, the, um, the battle pass isn't out yet. That's coming in the okay. March update. Oh, right, but have you heard about how the battle pass system is different in Apex? Uh, yeah, actually, could you tell me? If you, if you know this, uh, could you tell me? So, experience gained, yeah, that goes towards a battle pass is gained even if you don't have a battle pass. Everyone does that. Really? Yep. PUBG does that. Fortnite does that. Quake Champions does that. Yep. So when you buy a regular battle pass, you get everything? If you have, if you have enough XP, yes. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. Because um, they'll show you two bars and they'll go, 
the free one, and then they'll go with the no. battle pass one, and then it'll like it'll show your level. Like it'll go, oh yeah, so at level fucking fifteen, um, you know, you can you will get like in the free bracket, you'll get four crystals or whatever bullshit they want to do. And underneath it'll be like, oh yeah, weapon skin if you own the battle pass. So it's like a look. It's like think of it as like a a chart or a grid or a, ta a table. It's like, it goes across and it's like, oh yeah, um, one, two, three, four, five. And it's like, oh yeah, you're at five. Here's what you get. But if you own this, you'll get this as well. I see. The I think my biggest gripe with battle passes is you have an arbitrary time limit. Like, I think what would ease it a lot better for me is if you, you have a time limit to buy the battle pass, you know, between one to six months. Um, no, one to, mm -hmm. yeah, a season, which is usually three months. You buy it, and you can still upgrade and unlock everything even after that time limit, because then you're not wasting your money. You start to earn it, but you're not wasting your money. Why don't you just buy it at the end of the season? Because what if I want that gun anyway? What if I want, say, I want a skin for a gun, but I don't have enough XP at the end of the season, regardless of whether or not I bought or didn't buy it? I'd still be wasting money. If I were to get it, or I'd still be missing out if I didn't get it. And my my point is well, obviously if they if they um they cut it off right in at a the loot end, box, you're not guaranteed the gun either. I think you're just looking past it because it's a slot machine. It's it's a chance to get a gun. That's my argument. There's a chance compared to a straight off cut off line. Like I've paid to be cut off. So say if I don't mm. have, say I pay money, but I don't have enough skill to get the the skin that I wanted, which is usually at the end. I'm, mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss out just because I wasn't good enough. I paid money for this. Why am I being told I'm not good enough? Well, for I guess it? that's the trade-off. Like, you know, you could or if it, if it matters to you, you so much, why don't you either put more time in or buy the battle pass that just gives you the extra levels? Because one. Two things. One, I'm a student, and the second thing, I'm a student. So I'm not, I can't afford the expensive one. So you and shouldn't be buying I'm... loot boxes anyway. Well, I'm defending them. I'm not an avid buyer of loot boxes. That's a, that's something I want to put out. I, 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 I think that a time-based system where you put more time in, and depending on how well you play, or even if you don't play that well, as long as you put the time in, you get the experience, and then you can buy the battle pass at the end of the season, or even buy the extra levels if you don't want to put the time in you also, and just want the skin. Yeah, you also is a lot like, better. Yeah, it's a lot better than a slot machine where you don't know what you're gonna get. You're also forgetting it's that this system was specifically designed to make you exposed to the game more often. You have bought a, a uh, battle pass. That means you uh, what you'll want to play it more, obviously. But it's mm. it's it's sat there. Even when you get bored, you have to go back and play it, so you can still um, get the thing that you want at the end. But so mm. it's causing you to be more exposed to it, which means there's more potential for them to sell shit to you. Mm. That is something you also. It's a very mm, manipulative system, and again, just. Why? Why is there a cutoff point? I've paid for this. Why can't I still earn it after the season? Have a time limit for the battle pass to exist. Okay, I accept that limited time thing. Fair enough. I understand that. That's fine. But why is it at the end of that season it's going to cut me off and I will not get this skin anymore? I've missed out on a skin for Quake because I've just not been playing it because it's a broken, buggy mess. But. I can't go back and go, oh, hopefully I'll get it now, because the time limit's gone. I paid for that. I paid to get the items in that. I haven't got them. I've missed out on them. So I've wasted money on this now, because I wanted to. Cause I was foolish and wanted to support them. It, it's gone. I get that there is a problem with gambling and it can be predatory. I get that. I understand it. Um, I, I still why, why I think they should be a lot cheaper so they're not as vicious as they are now. They are fucking vicious at the moment. I hate that. Not going to alleviate it, of course, but it's still vicious. But I'm supporting a company with a chance to get something I want. Whereas this, I have to 
fucking grind. I have to sit there, play, 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 keep going, keep going, play, play, play. I gotta do work, or I could keep going for that skin. Oh, I've gotta go and spend time with people, but I gotta keep playing to get the skin. It's that is, <laughs> yeah, you know, that is a lot more vicious and vile in my opinion. Whereas a loot box is the skin really worth it to you at that point then? Oh, I paid for it. It must be worth more money. But it doesn't mean that it's necessarily worth my time as well. Because, well, mm. like, it'll be a matter of I'm sit there, grind, 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 grind. I finally get it. I'll play one, two match with it because then I have to go off and make up for the time that I've lost. So, effectively, I've just paid into... I've bought the ability to grind. I've bought the ability to grind on top of actually owning the game that I have to grind. You're grinding anyway. You bought the ability to get extra stuff when you grind. That is true, but why am I paying for the you're chance to get more things You're grinding if you're going understand. for one specific item on the list. But again, it's, a ta it's the time limit that really gets me. Why? Like, can you justify why there is a time limit? Because Dota did it. That's not a reason. Why? Why is the time limit a good thing? Because, because Dota did it, and it was always tied towards a tournament that was in the that was happening at the time. But why is it a good? That's thing? why it was season. Like, like this is my this is my argument. Why is it that, a good thing? Why is it necessary to have this time limit? And saying Dota did it, that's like no. Okay, no, you're 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 ignoring the history of why where why it was. Yeah. What would happen was, is that the money from these things used to go into the prize pool of tournaments. That's good. That's good. But in the terms context of, say, Quake, why is there a time limit for Fortnite? Why no, is there a time that's limit? why I'm saying. That's why I'm saying because Dota did it. Yeah, yeah. Because they made a lot of money because people wanted to support the tournaments. Yeah. So now they're yeah. going. So now. People are used to the idea. People will get the good, get it for the goodies rather than for the tournament itself. So if people want it, yeah, why not give it? But my question is, my question: Why the time limit? Yeah, why is there a time limit, and why is that good? I get right. Well, you've explained why there is a time limit. Historical factor, fair enough. I get that, yeah. and that I will sit there and commend Dota did a good job because it was tied to a specific event that you supported, which went to a prize pool, which was redistributed. You were getting yeah. something out of that battle pass being a thing. Like I think it was like twenty percent went to Valve, yeah. and the rest went to the prize pool. Yep, yeah. uh, I don't even think there was actually. T uh, quote me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe if you owed the battle pass. There was a time limit to earning items. You just got like a fucking skin or some shit straight off the bat when you did that. Um, I know there was, um, was time-based events with the battle pass, no, but other no, than that, no, no, no. There, w it it was both. Um, it was actually all three. It was you got a bunch of shit when you bought it. Mm -hmm. You got shit when you leveled up with it. And also there were extra side events as well with later battle passes. Yeah. Um, um Yeah. But So it was all three. Uh they they really innovated with it and a lot of companies don't really do all the things that they made. It's, uh, it's but my my standpoint still is yes Dota did it. Does it mean you should do it? No. Does it mean it's a good thing? It's an, no. It's an event. It's an event. There's no event. It's a monthly event. There was, there was, People... There mm -hmm. was no event by that point. It was just pay us money for a chance to get something that you may want. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what really offended me about it. Because half the shit in it... In fact, I will quote the Quake Champions one. It was just skins after skins after skins, nameplates, shit like that. Shit you don't want. And right at the very end, there's one unique gun skin. The one that changes the model. The one that changes everything about it. Same gun, obviously, but it changes... It is actual a visual treat. One. Right at the end. 
That's what I wanted. I didn't get that. And this is why I'm so pissed off. Like, I paid money for this. And I, did I get it? No, I didn't. And that is anti-consumer. That is straight up, from the very beginning, anti-consumer. Because there was no event tied to this. There was nothing. It was just, here's a battle pass. It makes money. Mm. And I get, I get that. I bought it to support them as well. I wanted to support it. You know, and I would, if this system was better, better fucking implemented, I would religiously buy that. If this game was better supported, so I would actually have the ability to play it and grind for it, I would support it. But it's not. I've not played Quake because it's a buggy, broken ass piece of shit. And the only thing that they're optimizing is their way of getting more money out of you. Like, they, the only reason they don't have loot boxes anymore is because they're not making money in certain countries because it's banned. They they pulled that, put in a battle pass system. Which, okay, fair enough. Some people like it, some people don't. I would have preferred the loot box because I thought they did them very, very fucking well. So instead, I now have bought into to grind for a specific gun, the only unique redeeming factor of that fucking thing, besides supporting a game that I want to enjoy. I love that game concept but it's done so badly that it's so fucking buggy at the moment and they've not fixed that and so they've done literally no fucking work into expanding the longevity of this game they've given me a game that i can't play with a battle pass that gave me just reskins because i couldn't afford the fucking actual remodeled products at the end that was actually decent You can see why I'm pissed off. Yeah. Anyway, I was just being devil's advocate, man. I don't like either system. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, I appreciate the devil advocacy because it meant there was an actual argument here. Um, yeah. You know, the ability to... It's all right having an opinion, but no, if you don't challenge it, then... You know, I feel that it's a stronger arm, well, argument. Boring podcast. Because... No, no, I feel it's a strong... I've, I've got a more stronger argument because I had to think a lot more about it because you've argued mm. it. But, yeah, no, I... I That's why I prefer loot boxes over... The other one. Battle passes. This is what I was talking about. I was talking about how um, they fucking abused their uh, monetary systems, how they overprice it, and that's my argument with a lot of... Because EA has the... Se- if I'm correct... Over all their games, they have the same pricing range for all of their fake currencies that are bound to one specific game. Like, Ubisoft had this wonderful thing, and this is my last point. They had, you know where you get achievements, and then you get these points, and then you could use those Ubisoft points on anything in there? That was good, I really like that. So you could earn it, earn it, and then get it on other things. Uh, so something that was even, even right EA even if even if you were to just strip back all these fucking MacGuffin c- currencies and then have it just all over doesn't matter if that person buys everything specifically for Apex Legends or decides to use whatever shrapnels left to buy a fucking uh, costume set in fucking Sims afterwards that would be a lot more consumer friendly. You would actually have a lot more sales because there's a lot more value to that shit. But they want, don't want to do that because adding more value means uh, money lost. Adding value mm. for the customer means money lost for them. And that is what pisses me off. I do not hate the idea of loot boxes. I think if it's done for free, it's a fun little uh, gimmick thing. I think if it's done on the cheap, ATP, I think, is the most it should be. Like, I... You, ATP, that's pocket change at this point. Pocket change that goes towards the developer saying, thank you for this, I want a chance to win something cool. Then it's worth more worthwhile. You know what I mean? Yeah. That way it's not gam. Well, it's still gambling. It's still technically gambling and people will still buy into it and spend a stupid amount. But that's, you know, that is a different problem. But I don't think it should be. This should be banned. You know, alcoholism is a problem for certain people, but it doesn't mean ban alcohol. You know, regulate it. I think regulation is the key here. 
regulate it properly. Yeah. Get rid of um, fucking MacGuffin currencies. They're stupid. Or regulate it. Nope, don't regulate make it. it get rid of it. Online. Get rid of it or make it a lot more accessible. Again, make this make EA coin. Here you go, EA. Have that EA coin. Get rid of all your stupid fucking MacGuffin currencies and make EA coin. I can buy a loot box in Apex Legend or a fucking skin in... Um, Battlefield. I want progression systems like from Battlefield 3 back. I don't know. How... Was that just a level system? I think that was. Mm. Yeah, simple. Nice and simple. But they won't simple do that. Simple don't make money. Exactly. Oh dear. Yeah, shall we move on to games we'd like to see? Yeah. Oh, I love this part of the podcast. It's I genuinely, it's really refined into something beautiful. This section. Um, it's like a diuretic hippo shitting onto your face. It is, but it's funny. Um, full on. Actually, no, not onto to your face. You're shitting onto someone else's, you know, face. Because that way, it's funny. Um, <laughs> you like this gun, eh? To- Tell you what, um, tell you what to do. This task with, oh, okay. Yeah, you had to do tasks and shit to get items for guns. That's actually a really good system. I like that. But it don't make you money. Yep, that's that's a fun system. What um, the fuck? What? Never mind. Go on. Um, I want to say one thing before we start. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I want a series of games, okay? Just a series of yeah. games that put you into um, a civilian, a citizen in certain eras of fucking British history. Specifically under, like, so a game in Thatcher's fucking reign, a game under Churchill's reign, a game under fucking Cameron's reign. But it's, like, really dystopian and, it's like, you play as an underbelly resistance member. A bit like Assassin's Creed, but you have to fight um, overthrow a government. I don't why know why. Would you I'd... be a resistance member to any of those regimes? Because in my head, they're a lot more fascist than they are now. I just so, want—I okay. just want to see politicians as villains, okay, man? I just find it funny. We already have villainous politicians. Yeah, but I want a game about it. We already have games about killing Hitler. He's not British. We need a game where you kill Mosley. Oswald Mosley, fuck yes. I'd, I'd buy anything with That's his face on it. He was a Chad. Yeah. In any case, let's start the section. Right, so, uh, you, I went first last week. You go first this week. Okay. Uh, cooking. Right, uh, let me get the notepad up. Oh yes, uh, let me, whilst I'm getting this up, Andy, do you want to tell them the rules? Oh yeah, uh, we go one by one, and we add a phrase or word or short se- sentence. No, no sentence. To... For the first first part of it, there's no sentence, so phrase like uh, first person shoot will be accepted. Or shooter mm. would be accepted, but um, I want a game where you play as a uh, robot cyborg who shoots people would be, not be accepted. Just I to... said short sentence, you know, one clause. Um... I still avoid it just in case. Um, yeah, you because know, I don't like the idea of people manipulating my shit. And and then once we start getting into like a ball rolling, then we start basically just going with the idea and just throwing it out. This is just purely these. This one word sentences is just like adding support beams to fucking shit. And then yeah. we start. Yeah, you get the gist. So, cooking. Um, because we love it and we always have to stick this shit in. RPG. Uh. Uh. Cooking. RPG. I'm trying not to say female protagonist because I know Cooking Mama exists. Uh, Fucking... Uh, 
Anime. Anime. Ooh, anime themed. Ooh. Um, what are those games? Uh, Tycoon. T Y C O O N. Tycoon. Mm. So I'll be able to make a restauranting empire by the end of it. Yeah. You start off in your little one-room kitchen, making shitty noodles, then you grow, you grow. to a French cuisine five-star hotel chain. Yeah. So, um, how, how about customization? Like, yeah. Um, Sims like customization. Like, uh, for obviously, for your, a little bit for your character, but, like, you can customise your restaurant down to the finest detail. If you want yeah. black drapes... And the aesthetics of your restaurant affects your scores from critics. Yes. Yes, yes. And yes. the critics, they look like the critic from uh, Ratatouille. Get out. Um, <laughs> so, rest you... To run. No, I wasn't. Jo- I wasn't joking. I think that the critic should look like the guy from Ratatouille with the. He was like evil, and he had like a long face, and like he would eat the ratatouille, and he'd be like, "My goodness, you served me ratatouille." Um, so just just um also going off on this, so not only do you get restaurant customization you get menu customization are we just making hell's um gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmare the game no we're probably just making a sims mod yeah you're not wrong yeah. you're not wrong so we've got restaurant menu and player customization what else should we go with just Rasa just because Fuck you, man. <laughs> you can... Right, the way this is designed is you can actually full-on make ratatouille if you want. You make a dish, like, you throw shit into a pot, you fucking yeah. organise how the, all the ingredients lay on the plate, and you can yeah. call this cuisine a ratatouille. And easy mode is where a rat comes down from the ceiling and does it all for you. And he pulls your hair so that, you know, all the movements are done for you. Uh, do you want to throw another gimmick into the uh, shit pot? That isn't rat based? Yeah. If you don't like a customer, you could spit in a soup. That that needs to be a feature, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put him but if it's a critic and you didn't know... They'll taste the spit, and then you get low low reviews. There we go. Spit. But if it's just feature. some customer, they won't know. But also, like the flip side you is, you bonus have to... points for putting in their shit. Like if you pay your employees minimum wage, so say it's like a fucking fast, you end up making a fast food joint like fucking look dicks. Mm. And like your lower wage employees have a potential, like a higher chance if they're on minimum wage, to spit in your food. So you have to like wrap apprehend them before they go and destroy single-handedly destroy your restaurant's reputation and then liberals make new laws to raise the minimum wage and then you go out of business (laughs) we should talk about politics more on the podcast (laughs) (laughs) Uh, you know what? I, I have no, I have no fucking qualms with that. It's but a, because the minimum wage was re- raised, now all your patty making businesses are off in China now. <laughs> Workers at minimum wage. So I have to say it slow because I can't spell minimum wage. Works at minimum wage. And because. Okay. And because the government has stopped caring about farmers, giving them subsidies and stuff, um, 
farming isn't that great in your country anymore, so you have to source the meat from shitty countries like Brazil or something. When the cows come half rotting and stuff, but, you know, you just cut the rotting bit off and then put it through the grinder and then uh, make the beef patties. And then you dump a ton of MSG into your beef patties. You know, you were spewing complete utter manure when I, I like for the whole duration of me typing that. Yeah. So we got a cooking anime RPG. Right. So we have to have like fucking. If you're cooking, like, it's a, like there's the cooking game and then there's the managing game. Hmm. Like if you're cooking, you can do like fucking cooking finishes. Hmm. <laughs> Like in uh, like in Yakuza, you do the heat button, and then you like it zooms in on your eyes, and there's just like, Fucking put a garnish or something. Yes, like just you pull out like a bit of uh, time out of a packet, zooms in on your eye, little glint comes, ding, and you go in. You drop it, lands perfectly, the dish looks fucking perfect. You send out, you get a high fucking rating. <sighs> I like this game. Are we making I'd play this game. Are we making Cooking Mama the anime? We're making Mature Cooking Mama. Because he gets to spit in food. Tycoon. <laughs> It's probably already there. It's probably in The Sims. It's probably not even a mod. I know you can cook in Sims. I know you can choose what dishes you want, but like besides that, it's like, nah. In some of The Sims, though, you can make businesses, though, right? I don't fucking know. I'd have play them. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, do you think we should carry on with this uh, shit pot, or do you think we should wrap it up? Nah. I, th I think there should be a side story where you're against a rival company. Uh, I think there shouldn't be a story in it at all. Well, I not, think that... not a story, but it's like a mechanic where, like, if you go into fast food, you'll get a specific person rivaling you in that area. Or if you go into gourmet food, there's, like, a gourmet chef, and these people, like, the fast food guys oh, are fat and yeah. slobbish. And, like, the fucking yeah. gourmet guy's French with a little pointy mustache. Yeah. And if you go into, like, uh... Uh... Asian food, then the guy knows Bushido and like wants to kill you. <laughs> and if you go into Israeli food, <laughs> oh, the just a we're gonna get kicked off the air, man. We're gonna get kicked off. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. I'm we're gonna. Gourmet. Oh, uh, with an E.T., I think. There we go. Uh, I'll just assume that's how you spell gourmet. Um, rival. In any case. It's a French. Uh, yeah, no, I like that mechanic. This is the last podcast that we're making, uh, by the way. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, can, I can feel Wall Street Journal uh, calling us Nazis right about now. Um, yeah, so, uh, also, our freedom of speech is being... Uh, Ooh, is being challenged right now by the British government uh, because apparently hate it comes under hate speech, which uh, true, yeah, good, which is arbitrary and flimsy law, which means basically if your feelings are hurt, it could count as hate speech, even if it isn't, you know, a threat or me directly uh, insulting you. Um, Depending on who you are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I could just not even offend people. The British government could just sit here and go. Ah. Someone said something slightly right wing, and you jump into action and therefore throw an eight hundred pound fine at me. Or be banned from the country for saying nasty things. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Can we just say right, can we just say yeah, one yeah. thing? In fact, no, I'm actually gonna save this for yeah. after the stream because uh I feel we'll get too political and we probably will get banned off the stream. Yeah, probably. Yep, yep. and uh, I think that yeah. So, yeah, the final the touch of this segment, then. What should we call oh. this game? Oh, um... Uh... Just call it Chef Simulator or something. Because that's what it is. No, no, because we got...
proper tycoon elements and it's anime and it's come on, we've got, we've got, give it a fucking flair, man. Chef Kisumi Deluxe, Rising yep. Superstar Mega. Chef Ultra. Kasumi um, Deluxe. Rising Superstar Mega. Full stop. Ultra. Exclamation mark. Rising uh, Superstar. Colon Mega. Colon Mega. Full stop. Full stop. Ultra. And I will save the Ultra for the Game of the Year edition. <laughs> no, Chef because then it could be Rising Superstar Mega, uh, whatever it was, Ultra Game of the Year edition. Yep. And then after that, you can have Legendary Edition. And we can't forget the Switch then edition. Have... And then you can have the Wii U version. Uh, the Wii U's not relevant then anymore. You can ah. port it to consoles that already came and went. <laughs> <laughs> what, like the fucking SNES? Yeah, like the PlayStation 2. <laughs> <laughs> the Super Famicom. Uh... <laughs> Right, okay, so we've got... We're releasing this shit on the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> We're getting on fucking tape, boys. Oh, dear. Oh, my stomach hurts. I don't blame you. We're coughing up some memes right here. No, I mean, I think I got a stomach ache. I ate a bunch of pizza yesterday. You fat? Yeah, you really do be like that. Yeah, they do be like that. Yeah. I just go with the comma so I can fucking type the shit in. There we go. Chef Kazumi Deluxe Rising Superstar Mega. We've fucking done it, boy. Let's open up our own fucking games, oh, honey. Um. Yeah. Should we wrap up then? Yeah, sure. Oh, I want to say one last thing. Um, I have a fucking avatar now. It looks really good. It looks very really dapper. Um. I will actually, whilst I'm here, I'm going to plug the artist who made it, because she did a wonderful job. Uh, very, very lovely to work with as well. Like, it's I feel it's alright to um, say that someone is a good artist and all that, but I think it's even more when they are actually a, you know, they're a decent person to work with, you know. So, yeah. um, her name is Sanaku. Also, um, I, it, her Twitter is at S A N A S A R Q. Mm hmm. And that is her Twitter handle. If She's not currently taking commissions at this time, but um, she's a wonderful artist that uh, yeah. might hit her up when she does do commissions again. Yeah. Get your own. I need, my, I need a proper. A proper image for when I blue screen again. Uh, again. Um, Although I do I do like my face uh, grinning a bit too much there. Uh, yeah. Currently it is just your Discord logo just appearing there. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, I can't be asked to turn that shit off again. It's probably for the best. Yeah. Right then. Let's end it here then. Um, I'm okay. Got to roll the credits just in case um, something actually did happen of note. I mean, probably not. I, I wish I'd stop doing it because it actually makes me feel worse. But oh well. What the fuck? I have credits and I roll them all the time. I feel bad. There we go. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Shout out to literally fucking no one. I shout out, I shout out to you, Connor. I shout at myself as well. It's all that low self-esteem I've got. Don't we all? <laughs> Don't we all? Don't forget hey, to follow us. If you wanna <laughs> to follow my shit on the Twitters. Biggest Reneon. There's my Discord. Biggest... Discord. 
Join the Discord. Do it now, sheep. Follow my Discogs. Follow Connor as well. He's on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. He's the demon lead. I am the demon 69. lead. 69. Yeah, 69. I mean 629. Yeah. Should that's a say, that's a wrap. Should we, should we just say bye and just cut straight off? This train wreck of a fucking episode. I liked it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Bye. Bye bye, everybody.